Well, I think that the way that people go through birth, whether it's the mother, the, the baby, or the father, it, it's a separating ritual. And that's exactly what shouldn't be done with mammals. Um, mammals need connection. Um, no matter what species of mammal they are, you know, that's, that's the definition of a mammal. You have a newborn that needs mama. Needs mama for an ex, you know, extended time, whether in arms, or on the hoof as part of a herd. Mammals are all about connection. And we're the only one that's turned that, that time and, and created rituals of separation. And the United States has led the world in that way with some countries in say Latin America who took it even f to a greater extreme. I would say Brazil being a champion of that to where we have private hospitals. I was in one a few years ago. Uh, where the c-section rate was 95 percent and that has such a deep deep uh, set of effects that reverberate throughout the culture and so you have a disrespect of the creative power of, of the female and if you disrespect the female then that means everybody becomes really infected and flooded with fear hormones and so then that means up goes distrust up goes violence up goes psychological, emotional, spiritual pain. Uh, we are cut off from nature, Mother Earth. Absolutely cut off. And so what is the response then? You, you destroy that which nourishes, is there to nourish us. And, and you hold uh, indigenous peoples, cultures in contempt as you continue to rape and desecrate and, and devour uh, the planet. Um, thinking, oh, perhaps if we, we go in this scientific way and really um, surpass ourselves, oh, we'll, have, we'll find another planet to desecrate. Oh, yeah, right. So, I mean, it's so obvious that there's something wrong with it. That's what the counterculture, you know, in the late 60s was revolting against. We thought that was imminent. Um, I was not one of those that thought that we were going to have a quick and easy change of consciousness and everything was going to be hunky-dory in 10 years. I think I was kind of knowing that it was going to take longer and I'm more of a long-distance runner type of person. But it was, it was hopeful for a time because you saw we were shaking the timbers of the very culture. At the same time, it was learning all the ways it could resist. And it, it's, uh, it's been a building for too long to be easily knocked down. It's not easy to get a real paradigm shift. I think I've always known it was going to take more than one generation to discover a new culture. And then the real trick is, can you pass it on to that next generation? Or are they going to go, I'm, uh, I'm going to revolt against you? And then they'll snap right back to the thing that you were uh, reacting to um, and we were trying you know consciously not just to be reactive but to be creative of something that could be sustained and I didn't see any way that you could do that without um, respecting and respecting and learning from peoples of cultures that said as the, as the uh, people, the Haudenosaunee, uh, the Haudenosaunee people, the Six Nations or Iroquois Confederacy people said, you shouldn't take any action unless you're thinking seven generations, you know, into the future. Well, that would make you be pretty careful, wouldn't it?